But offensively, it's control the clock, hold on to the football, and move to five and one on the season without getting anybody seriously hurt. Well, Hiram did win the coin toss early. They deferred to the second half, so they will have the football, and they will move right to left at the start of the second half. Chris Austin has the opening kickoff, gets out across the 30 to the 35, out of bounds with a flag coming in on the return. James Romanowski is going to get called for a block in the back. They're going to initial signal from the referee is an illegal formation against the receiving team. And I got to believe it's a block in the back. Well, they're shouting over to Greg Demelak what the call is going to be. And they may give Vassal another shot. The official still holding the football back uh, where the uh, return occurred. Well, they will hustle upfield. Vassal will kick this one off. Once again, he is teeing it and up they, back they, at the 35. So they, it was a five-yard penalty against Hiram for an illegal formation on a kick return. The referee gave the signal of the rolling hands, which is a procedure call. And so Vasa will kick off from the 35 this time. We'll see if he can get the foot into it, get some distance. The wind is at his back right now, the kick will drift back to the 10 yard line. Austin drops it, picks it up back at the five. Now he's still behind the 10 yard line and he is going to be hit, finished off by Jacob Adams. Sean Lapsevic made the first contact with Austin and then Adams finished off the play. And the Terriers will start out at the eight yard line, 92 yards away from the end zone. And for an offense that is going to be forced into one dimension in the second half, being eight yards from your own end zone is probably not, not the situation that Hiram wanted to be in. 14.44 to go, third quarter, just underway in the second half. They will snap it back to Hannah in the shotgun. He hands it straight ahead to Caleb Jones. Jones to the Lake Placid, Florida product. Sophomore, 5'9", 170. Many lake cities there in Florida. Probably is along the I-4 corridor. <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday, Ed, when they had the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid, <laughs> Florida. 14-14 to go in the third quarter. True adventure for the downhill skiers. Caleb Jones again trying to move along the outside and cannot turn it upfield. He is hit and knocked back again. Jake Adams in there. Ryan Ferguson was there. Dale English got in there as well. Third down and eight. Football marked at the 10-yard line of the Terriers. Opening drive of the second half. 24-7 case with 13.40 to go. Wind right in the face of the Terriers right now. Hannah takes the snap and the shotgun drops back to throw. Middle of the field, it's caught and then dropped. A big hit applied by the Spartans. The well, intended target was Brendan James. And Dan Calabrese separated James from the football with a shoulder to the chest. And James is not getting up. He never saw Calabrese coming. Calabrese was like a freight train coming right at him. James is down. Sighted him up and just planted a shoulder. That ball popped back a good 10, 12 yards. I was waiting for a Hiram Terrier to make one of the Pittsburgh Steeler immaculate reception kind of catches because it looked like that hit. Looked like a Jack Tatum to Frenchie Fuqua. Kind of collision. Yeah, the ball was in the air for uh, several yards after the 
contact, but uh, Brendan James is down. They're still taking a look at him down there on the sideline. 13.27 to play. And James starting to get up now. I'm sure had the wind knocked out of him on that play. Fourth down and eight for the Terriers. James seated right now on the ground, and boy, Ed, uh, great to see him getting up. And you think back to last week when we saw the serious injury to Rob Conte of Oberlin. On back-to-back -back plays, Oberlin suffered debilitating injuries. And it wasn't but four or five plays later that they saw their wide receiver Adam Nice go out of the ball game as well. It is fourth down, and Scott Curley will punt from the end zone. He will get a nice kick away. Calabrese goes back behind midfield to catch it from the 45, 50, 45, 40, and an ankle tackle brings him down at about the 37-yard line. The miracle maker, Dan Calabrese. That was all him on that return. 45-yard kick and a nice return for Calabrese of 16 yards, and they'll mark it at the 39-yard line of the Terriers. The well, Spartans start in Terrier territory, leading it by a score of 24 to seven. First and 10 case, Eric Olson with an eye in the backfield now. It is Secre and Anderson. Secre gets the carry, moves upfield to the 35, and close to the 33-yard line, Manny Secre gets six, and it's second down for Case. Well, Secre just kind of picked his way through. And I would expect to see a little bit more of that in the second half. Let Secre maybe find a rhythm. Let the Case offense just grind it out. Same formation. Anderson stays in at fullback. Secre is the tailback. Sean Lapsevic, the slot receiver on the right. Metal sits is split wide to the right. Case is uneven to the right. Olsen looks to throw it, looking for Metal sits, makes the catch at the 25, angles back middle of the field, and he is taken down by Phil Arnold. As he gets close to the 24 yard line, it's good for a first down. Well, Case will be on the road next Saturday afternoon, a big game against the Worcester Scots. The Baird Brothers Trophy will be up for grabs. We'll have pregame audio coverage here on Case.edu beginning at 12.45. Manny Secre to the 25, dives ahead to the 20-yard line. He is ridden down over there by Oliver Dickerhoof. Secre a little slow getting up, but he's all right. Second down for Case. It'll be second and six after a four-yard pickup. Case has won four in a row over Worcester. They've maintained that Baird Brothers trophy, the fishing rod trophy. Scots have had a tough season so far. They're two and four. They're playing at Wash U today. Here's a completion to Metal Sits, but it's behind the line of scrimmage, and that play goes nowhere. <clears throat> Nicely defended by Tyler Williams, the outside linebacker for the Terriers. It is third and nine after a loss of three. Third and nine from the 23-yard line of Hiram. 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. Olsen from the shotgun. Secre in the backfield. Here is the snap back to Olsen on third and nine. Look out. He'll go down in a heap. Tyler Williams records the sack on Eric Olsen. Well, Williams waited back and just waited for a seam to develop and came through on the blitz, a delayed blitz, and Olsen just didn't see him. It was to his backside. Olsen was looking near side for a receiver to break open. All the way back to the 30-yard line. And it's a fourth down situation now for Case. They will go for it. The football on the Hiram 30. Fourth down and 16. Four receivers set, three to the wide side of the field. Olsen to throw it, looking for Secre out of the backfield. He makes the catch, sliding nope. down near the 25. Well, they are going to say he caught it. I thought the umpire immediately in the middle said no catch. 
And the linesman gives him the reception to the 25. It's a five-yard pickup, well short of the first down. And Hiram comes out, and they will take over. 10-11 to play here in the third quarter, 24-7. Case on top of Hiram. And now they're going to say there was no catch. Now they're going to wave off the catch and Hiram takes over at the 30 yard line. So after marking it at the 25, they now move it back up five yards. Brandon Hanna, middle of the field. It's caught over there by Jeff Schofield at the 35 yard line. Pick up of five on the quick pass over the middle. And it's second down and five. The wind really whipping around on the field right now. At game time, they were recording gusts of 35 miles an hour. A little more than uh, five on the pickup. Give them eight, second down and two on the completion to Schofield. Four receivers set now for the Terriers. As Brandon Hanna will have... Schofield in motion, and they give it to Schofield on the sweep. He hits the line of scrimmage and is stopped right there. It'll be third and short coming up for the Terriers with 9.20 to go here in the third quarter. Clock moving. Trying to get their personnel out as the play clock hits 20. So plenty of time yet for Hiram. 24 to seven case, third down and two from the Hiram 38 yard line. Four receivers in the game, Hannah back to throw it, middle of the field, caught by Schofield, first down yardage out across the 40, close to the 43 yard line. And the Terriers earn four more plays on another quick hit over the middle to Jeff Schofield. Schofield, the freshman, out of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. 8.51 to go third quarter. Case trying to win the annual homecoming game. Hannah fires it up and over everybody's head and out of bounds and this will get a flag. Dale English was coming in for the quarterback pressure and Hannah still in the pocket flipped it out of bounds Tight end. Tom Moran was in the area, but it's going to be a, well, let's see what the call was. I believe that was an ineligible receiver downfield. They'll walk it back to the 37-yard line. Ineligible receiver against Hiram. First and 15 for the Terriers from the 37-yard line. They are operating in their own territory. Trailing case, 24 to seven. Brandon Hanna calls out the signals. There goes the snap. He's back to throw it. Angles to the sideline, caught out there by Moran. Did he get his feet down? He did. They got the penalty yardage back as he lands at the 41-yard line. Second down and 11. Hurry up offense for Hiram. Working against the wind here on this drive in the third quarter. They are moving right to left. Here is the snap. Rolling out right in trouble and he gets rid of the football quickly as again the Spartans come in. Wade Self there with the pressure. And they're going to say he did get the ball back in the line of scrimmage out of the pocket able to get it forward across the line so it is no intentional grounding for the Hiram Terriers. 8.20 to play. Third quarter. Clock stops with the incompleted pass. David Klimazuski lines out, uh, lines up wide to the left. He's covered one-on-one -on -one with Kerry Dieter. Back to throw. Hannah guns it downfield. This one's up for grabs and it's incomplete as Brendan James was the intended target. And that uh, will 
Bring about fourth down and 11. And Scott Curley will come out. 8-14 to play. Well, we are going to make the old switcheroo here. We are trading up <laughs> as uh, Ed Doherty is uh, off to Buffalo, New York to uh, broadcast the St. Ignatius game tonight as Curley punts this one. It'll reach Calabrese on a bounce. Nice return out across the 30, 35, 40, and wiped down at about the 41-yard line. And Case will have it first and 10 with 8.03 to go in the third quarter. And Doherty off to broadcast a St. Ignatius game somewhere in New York State. So we bring in Dan Whalen, the former All-American quarterback here at Case Western Reserve. How are you? I'm doing good, Dave. How are you? Great. Great to see you here. We were hoping you could... Uh, Come in. I didn't see you before the game. We were afraid to, we might be hung out to dry here. I was here out there in the blustery wind on the roof there watching the game for a little bit, but uh, it's nice to be in the in the warm press box here. It is uh, definitely uh, blustery down there today as Olsen fires under pressure. It's a little underthrown and incomplete. Looking for the tight end, George Duraney. 7.59 to go here in the third quarter. Did you uh, find it to be tough elements when it was windy like this? Very tough. We had a game like this my senior year at Chicago, if you remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I threw actually a couple interceptions that game, but it is, it's, uh, you know, it's a little harder when it's a cross breeze. I think right now it's blowing in, you know, they're with the wind right now, but uh, it can be very, very difficult to throw the football. I, I'd rather play, you know, in snow than, than in rain and wind like, uh, wind like this. Olsen rolling out to the right. Fires for Metalsitz. It's incomplete. A little underthrown there. Third down and 10. Football at the 42-yard line of the Spartans. They lead it by a score of 24 to 7. Well, Ed and I were remarking earlier, Dan, uh, this Hiram team, the addition of this Hiram team this year, a yeah. little more spirited effort than we've seen the past couple of years. They are. You know, the thing about Hiram that we – we usually had the edge on was, was a special teams, and I think you saw that early on with the two big mm -hmm. kick returns. But um, if Hiram can cannot give up those big plays on special teams, the, you know the block punts, the, the 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 kick returns for touchdowns, I think they can keep themselves in the game. And that's what they're doing. Uh, Seventeen points here in the third quarter is is not typically something you'd see with between us and, and them at this point in the game. Well, Olson under pressure goes down in the pocket. Everybody was covered, and the sack recorded. And the football back near the 41-yard line. It'll be fourth down and 11. They only lose one on the sack. And Olsen stays in the game. Looks like they might uh, look to go for it here. And now we'll see if he drops back in the punt formation. And he does so. They'll get Dominic Har Harper back deep to receive this punt by Olsen. It's a good one. It will bounce at the 20 and take a case bounce to the 10. Harper picks it up and gets back to the 16-yard line before he is tackled by Sean Lapsevic. And a nice kick by Eric Olsen. Boy, it's uh, surreal sometimes for us to see number five <laughs> being the quarterback and punting oh, out is there. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a little deja vu here. You know, they've been getting, Hiram's been really getting after him this afternoon. They've had a few sacks. I think they have four or five sacks today, which is, uh, I don't know the correct, the, you know, the right number on that, but I think they're they're right up there, and they're coming after the quarterback. Yeah, they have pressured him very effectively today. 24-7 case. Hiram takes over at their own 17-yard line, and a direct snap to Chris Austin, the tailback, but flags come out on the play. So some movement there. Illegal procedure against Hiram. They will move this back to the 12-yard line. Well, obviously, you keep up uh, with what's going on here at Case. What have been uh, some of your impressions of Eric Olson? Uh, well, I talked to Coach Debs. Actually, I stopped in, you know, a few weeks ago and just had a conversation with him. Eric's progressing nicely. You know, it's it's tough for a guy to come in and, and learn a new system right off the bat anywhere, um, let alone somewhere, you know, where we had three, four good seasons in a row now, and you, the ex expectations are kind of there where you have to win football games. And, um, you know, the thing that they said Eric, Eric is, is doing well is he's, he's making reads and stuff like that. I think he needs a little bit more time to learn protections up front. That's something that the quarterback's usually uh, uh, responsible for. But I think they have they taken a little bit of pressure off him, and they've, they've given that responsibility to the offensive line uh, right now. And, and I think that's just why you're seeing, so, you know, so many sacks, some guys getting after the quarterback. It's because it, it takes some time for those guys to get on the same page and, and for him to, you know, take care of those protections. Brandon Hanna with a reception or a connection with Jeff Schofield. And now Hanna 
hit as he throws. The football drops incomplete out past the 32-yard line. That's going to bring about a third down for the Hiram College Terriers with 6.28 to go in the third quarter in case leading it by a score of 24-7. to I played against Brandon Hanlon in high school. He was asked to be a lakeside dragon. We played against him my senior year. He actually was a very, very good high school quarterback. Well, he certainly seems to have some tools. Very mobile quarterback. Case has kept him on the run a little bit today. Third down and 10 from the 17-yard line. He drops back to throw, guns it, middle of the field. It is tipped by the intended receiver. That was Josh Corkhill got a hand on it. Then it bounced, uh, almost caught by a couple of other guys. Case almost had a chance to pick that one off. Ryan Ferguson was in the area, but it falls incomplete. And it's fourth and 10. And Scott Curley will be back out. He has been a busy man today punting for Hiram. And Dan Calabri's back at midfield. They'll try and kick it away from Dan, but he makes the catch at about the 47-yard line. He is hit and dragged down right there. Josh Corkhill on the special teams coverage. Well, Dan Calabri's last week had a uh, monster day. Three interceptions, two return for a touchdown. Yeah, he, he's, he's a great player. You know, I, I know Dan, he's a local guy from, from NDCL, and obviously we played a season together. He... He's just, from what Coach McCullough says, he's just learning the game, and he's knowing how to put himself in all the right spots. And that's a big thing for, for a cornerback is, is not only to, you know, to be able to cover one-on-one, -on -one, but you have to know what's going on with the defense, what, what's, what the defense coordinator is trying to, to set up uh, the offense in, in the situation. I think Dan's getting a lot, lot better at that. Nice spin move by Secray on the first carry of the drive. Gets out across the 40 and down close to the 38-yard line. That'll be a pickup of close to seven for Manny Secre. Second down and three. Well, you had a host of good running backs to work with while you were here, Dan. Secre is a little different, brings a little different dimension than we've seen the past few years with Case. And he was shaken up on the first play of the Rochester game, week two, but uh, seems to be getting back close to 100% as Olsen is back to throw. He'll gun it to Lapsevic, makes the catch inside the 25, down close to the 21-yard line. That's a first down for Case, and it nets 17. That might have been the best throw I've seen Olsen make all day, that 15-yard deep out on the, you know, he was, he was dropping back after the play action pass, but uh, it was a tight spiral, got it in, in that window, and I, I think that's the best throw I've seen him make on the day here. Well, Lapsemic, the freshman, hauls it in, first and 10 from the 21. 5-21 to go, third quarter, 24-7 case. Eric Olson looks over to the case sideline. He'll get the new play signaled in. Christian Anderson in at fullback. Secre is the tailback. Olson drops back to throw, guns it far side of the field for Metalsitz, makes the catch 10, down to the 5, hit the down, deck yeah. and lost the football. But he was down at the 4, and that will be another 17-yard pickup, and that was a tough throw, Dan, going back across the field. Yeah, back across the field, and he was under pressure. He actually tripped right after he let go of that football and uh, had some pressure on his legs, which is always tough. You, throwing guys you know, guys in your face and, and throwing a pass is one thing, but when you have stuff going around your ankles and knees, you're always a little leery about letting go of the football and, and stepping into the throw. That was, that was a good play, and he took what the defense gave him there then that short hitch route. Case knocking on the door, first and goal from the four-yard line. Secre will stay in. Now Steven Magister has checked in at the fullback position. Two receivers on the left. They'll give it to Manny, see what he can do, and he dives ahead close to the two, maybe inside the two. It'll be second down and goal. Yeah, here inside the one-yard line coming up, I think I'd like to see Coach Stabs just give it to Olsen over the middle. Just, just a you know, quarterback sneak. Because it took him, on the last time they were down this far, it took him all four plays to, to punch it in. I think when you have, he's 6'2", he's 6'3", six six maybe. I think uh, you use his size, and as you get close to the goal line, you give it, a, give it a shot at the gut if they don't get this here. Looks like it's at the two, second down and goal. So Secre picked up two. He has two touchdown runs on the day so far. Under four to play here in the third quarter. Now Olsen wants to throw it. Little timing route for Metalsitz. He makes the catch in the back of the end zone. It's a touchdown, Spartans. Brian Metalsitz runs under that one. Just enough air under it. Nicely placed by Eric Olsen, and it's 30 to seven. It was a good throw. Man-to-man -man coverage there. You got one-on-one. -on -one. You take your chances, especially second and goal. You got two more shots. You figure Coach Debs was not going to kick a field goal there had it come to that point, but uh, it was a great ball. 
Metal sits touchdown reception number three on the season. And Dan Vassell in to try the PAT. Calabrese will hold it. There is the snap, the hold, the kick is up, and it is good. Vassell makes it 31 to 7, 350 to play here in the third quarter. Back with more from Case Field on homecoming Saturday, 2011, in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. Okay, and, uh, thanks. And they do... Uh, 3.50 to play here in the third quarter. David Wilson at Case Field along with Dan Whalen, the former All-American quarterback here at Case Western Reserve University. Ed Doherty on his way to Buffalo, New York. He's the uh, broadcaster for St. Ignatius High School. They have a game out in Buffalo tonight against St. Francis High School. Here's the kickoff from Dan Vassell. Bounces all the way back to the 15. Ball is loose down there. It was mishandled. Case on the kickoff, coverage recovers. Adam Watson comes up with the loose ball as that one bounced away from Andrew Calhoun of the Terriers. And Dave, that's exactly the type of special teams play I was just talking about a few seconds ago that Hiram is, is, is typically known for, but uh, you know he's got to wrap that ball up and fall on it. Looked like a pretty good hop to him, Dan, but he was unable to get the uh, handle as he tried to turn it upfield, maybe running a little too quickly before he had the good hold on the football. By the way, Christian Anderson was shaken up on that last drive for Case, and he appears to be all right after he was examined by the training staff. It is first and 10 for the Terriers at the 18-yard line. 31-7 Case, 3.47 to play, and a whistle and a timeout will be taken by the Spartans. 31-7 your score, Case leading it, trying to improve to 5-1 and one on the season with a big game against Worcester coming up next week on the road. But, uh, Dan, uh, certainly is great to catch up with you here as uh, you sit in for Ed for the rest of this game. Sure. I know a lot of fans listening will want to know what you're up to football-wise now. Well, actually, just uh, got back into town a little over a month ago. I was in Kansas City doing some advertising uh, work there. Um, I got a new agent, a guy named Adam Heller is a great guy. Um, he's actually the same agent for Beanie Wells, who many people know because they're Buckeye fans around here. But um, right now we're just working to get m myself on a, an arena team probably for this coming year and maybe see what happens uh, next season. Cleveland probably won't be my first option. They have John Dutton, who's a veteran quarterback, coming back here. And uh, I am talking with a few teams, Spokane and Milwaukee being the two front runners right now. Hopefully... You know, we can get a contract done and, and something will happen because uh, you can't count your chickens until they hatch, especially uh, when you're talking pro football. Getting ready to restart play here. Hiram football first and 10 from the 18-yard line. Pardon me, case football after the fumble on the kickoff. Olsen fires it to lap Sevic. He makes the catch and is run out of bounds out near the 16, maybe the 17-yard line. Something I really like to see Olsen do here in the last half of this game, just – because at this point, 31 to seven, you got to think it's out of reach, just to work on getting the ball out on time. He he does look like he holds on to it a little bit longer sometimes. And in this type of game, when you're up, you know, 24, uh, with the third quarter winding down, you like to to maybe see him work on those type of things. Magister is still the fullback. Secre is in at tailback. Might have been a busted play, and now Olson in trouble as he tries to roll to the right. He carries a guy on his back about three yards, gets back close to the 22-yard line, but it will be a five-yard loss for the Spartans. It did not look like that developed the way they drew it up. No, they, they blew that play up in on the left side of the defensive line, and it was pretty much doomed from the beginning. I think, I, I don't know if it was a pass or if it was a play-action pass or if it was a run run play and Eric just pulled the ball uh, because he saw that penetration on the left side of the line. Olsen carried Jared Lewis on his back for about five yards. Jared Lewis, the 6'1", 220-pound defensive lineman. Could you do that now? <laughs> I don't know if I can do it now. Wow. I, I, 
maybe a few years ago. <laughs> 31 to 7. Spartans leading it. Olsen back to throw. Long third down for Case. He hits metal sits on the sideline. He's pushed out of bounds at the 17. They pick up six on the play. And he is under pressure every play. He just took another hit there after the after the throw, and it looks like uh, Case is going to try to field goal here maybe. Now Olsen comes off. Looks like he was uh, shaken up a little bit on that play, but appears to be all right. Vassa will try a field goal. This one will be held at about the 24, so he'll try his second 34-yarder of the day. He had a 34-yarder earlier in the game. That's his long of the season. English will snap it. There's the hold by Calabrese. Here is the kick from the right hash. It is up and good. Dan Vassell hooks that one in from the right hash mark, 34 to seven. And boy, you talk about a guy really making a great recovery from a couple of weeks ago when he had uh, somewhat of a disastrous game against Denison. He sure. has come back and made some adjustments. And I know the coaching staff, Jerry Shuplinski, and Others have worked uh, very closely with him these past couple of weeks, but uh, he is kicking free and easy right now. He there. is, and it, you know he had to he had to wait his turn because we had a great kicker in Sam Coffee here, who was a four-year starter for us, and and Sam just graduated last year. I think uh, Dan is, is steadily improving as the weeks go on here, and that's something you want to see, especially down the stretch with a tough Worcester team coming up next week. So case up now 34 to seven after Vassal's second field goal of the day. And case will kick off two minutes, 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Case taking control of this homecoming game against Hiram. And here is the approach by Vassal. He will boom this one downfield. It'll get all the way to the 10 and again off the hands of Calhoun. He goes all the way back to the one to pick it up. To the five, back up field close to the nine yard line. And by then, the Spartans coming down in waves to knock Calhoun down. Matt Davis was there along with Wade Self. And Hiram will start out at the 10 yard line. Yeah, it just looked like he misjudged that ball and it ended up sailing over his head. And by that point, uh, he had to go scoop it up the one yard line and hope for the best. So again, Dan, you nailed it on the head. The special teams. Don't, uh, Getting it done for Hiram here in the second half. 34 to seven, Case leading it. And now the Hiram offense comes back out with Brandon Hanna in the shotgun. Chris Austin is the tailback and he will get the handoff, makes it upfield, right in the middle of the field, angles to the hash mark, gets out past the 20 yard line before he is tackled. Dan Calabri's in there, Kevin Nassim on the defensive coverage. It's 11 for Chris Austin and a first down. And they will run the hurry up. And the tight end, Tom Moran in there on the right side of the formation. Three receiver set for Brandon Hanna. He'll take the snap, fakes the handoff. Now he gives it to Chris Austin, tries to string it out on the right side, turns it upfield, gets close to the 29, and is knocked out of bounds. Kerry Dieter and Ryan Ferguson over there. You know, and same, same as I said before for, for our offense, this is the time for Hiram to, to better themselves too and work on some things that they may not have had in the game plan necessarily, uh, but things that, that they need to get better on uh, moving forward. And, and that was an example of a good eight-yard sweep off the right side. Second down and two. Football at the 29-yard line. And one thing that jumps out at you very quickly is the numbers that Hiram has. Uh, Quite a large roster. Right, yeah. I mean, typically for, for a school like them to have, uh, you know, they've got to be upwards of 60, 70 guys, I would think, and uh, that's, that's good numbers for Hiram. Austin Ooh. turns it upfield again, oh. and Dan Calabrese with another big hit as Austin crosses the 30-yard line. Might have picked up two. It's very close to a first down, and they will move the sticks. So he earned that first down with the... Big hit from Calabrese, first and 10, under a minute to play here in the third quarter. David Wilson along with Dan Whalen from Case Field. A very cloudy and overcast and cool day here in the Cleveland area. 43 seconds left in the quarter. Hannah quick out to the tight end. Moran makes the catch and steps out of bounds, then wipes out over there on the turf. Jake Adams was chasing him. He stepped out of bounds at the 37 yard line. So did you enjoy the arena league? I did, it's a little bit different. People you know, might say, well, football is football. It's, it's completely different. And you're, you know, you're on a field half the size. You are 
uh, playing without offensive tackles, so the pocket is, is smaller because you only have two guards and a center. Uh, the footwork is different because the routes are not the same. It, it's There's a lot of different things going on, and it's a fast game. And I've had guys on my on my team last year that had played in the NFL that said they they think uh, Arena may be a tad faster just because so much is going on in such right. a small space. Caleb Jones gets the carry. He is hit and tackled. Adam Watson, Rich Doolin in there. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. It'll be third down for Hiram. We are through three here on homecoming Saturday at Case Western Reserve University. Your score, the Spartans 34, the Terriers 7. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. This year, Qdoba will cater like 10,000 parties. Where? When? I'm there. Well, these parties are hypothetical. I was just talking about Qdoba catering. Hot taco bars with fire-grilled chicken and marinated steak, flour tortillas, and taco shells. You'll also get their hand-smashed guacamole, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and salsa. They'll deliver to your home or office, and they'll even set it up. Can I bring a guest? Oh, boy. Visit Qdoba.com today for more information about Qdoba catering. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. I'm just trying to line up good guests. I had Sam Ritibiano last week, and uh, this week we have Tony Banks, former NFL quarterback, and um, we're trying to get Jim McMahon. So. 34 to seven, your score. Case leading it as we head to the fourth quarter. Case four and one, trying to extend this three-game winning streak. Seems odd, doesn't it, to say three-game winning streak? You're used to much higher numbers during you know, your years you know, it, here at Case, Dan. It, it does, but when you look at, at, at this team and, and the new players they have at certain positions and, you know, four and one and then heading towards five and one, that's that's a fantastic, fantastic start. I'm sure it's well ahead of what Coach Debelak had expected coming in. Hannah rushed out of the pocket trying to throw it away. Jordan Banky made the interception, but uh, he was out of bounds. And so uh, Hannah, under great duress, is able to throw the ball away, barely. And that will set up a punt here. Now it's fourth down and four from the 37-yard line of the Terriers. Dan Calabrese will be back deep. He has returned one punt for a touchdown this year. That was against Denison. Scott Curley awaits the snap, and there it is. Here is the kick. They'll go away from Calabrese, angling it over near the sideline. That'll be a very short kick and out of bounds near the 40-yard line. That uh, will end up being about a 23-yard kick with no return. And the Spartans will come out. And it is tough to punt on windy days like this. I can tell you that. It's a tough to throw is one thing, but, but kicking the ball in the wind is, is another, and it's uh, he's having a rough day back there. I'm trying to remember what... Uh, game it was or what who the opponent was you had a 75 yard punt a little help from the wind a little help from a roll that was against Denison here at home all right uh, it might have been my junior year but uh, <laughs> that was a great roll <laughs> yes it was gotta love that it was paired with a you know the, the 22 yard punts here and there too so Spartans have a busted play Max Bohan is in at quarterback tried to hand it off to Secre. I think Manny thought he was supposed to get it Bohan thought he was supposed to keep it and that play goes nowhere three-yard loss back to the 36-yard line. Second down, 13 for Case. They lead it 34 to seven. Fourth quarter action here, wind blowing against the Spartans right now. On a very chilly day here in Cleveland, Ohio. Case and Hiram. Bohan calling out the signals, directs a little traffic, now they will Put it on the ground. I believe that's Ricky Hanslick carrying the football. Another Lake County guy. Hanslick out of Mentor. 5'8", 200-pound freshman running back. He is hit and dropped for no gain. Ball still at the 36-yard line. By the way, I want to ask you about yeah. Kareem Hunt. Oh, boy. He is at uh, your alma mater. He is, he's a fantastic player, and he's only a junior. <coughs> You've got uh, Kareem Hunt. In the last three games, he is nearly at 1,000 yards. He had a 400-yard game a few weeks ago, then it followed up with a 300-yard game. And then this, this past week against Lakeside, 200, I think, 18 yards. So held, held to 218 last uh, night. Huh? Yeah, such a rough day. It is fourth down for Case after an incomplete pass out to the near side. They were 
looking for the freshman, Tony Leibarger, who has been in the game a lot today. They have not thrown his way. And that was the first time he had been the intended target. Incomplete, fourth down and 13. From the 36-yard line, Eric Olson will be in to punt this one away. Here is the snap and the kick by Olson. That will take a case bounce. Harper will not try a return, and it will roll all the way down close to the 20-yard line. That will be a 44-yard kick with no return, and the Hiram Terriers will come back out. Yeah, Kareem Hunt of Willoughby South uh, having one of the most prolific seasons of anyone in the uh, Cleveland area. Well, uh, the the I believe it's a 41-year-old rushing record at Willoughby South is held by Sean Nicely's dad, Mike Nicely, and he has had the record since 1970, and that record is 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 broken now at this this point in the season and Kareem is just adding on with two more games to play and hopefully a playoff push here from the Rebels. Hannah hits Schofield with a pass out across the 25 close to the 27 that will be a pickup of six. Second down and four coming up for Hiram 13-01 to play here in the fourth quarter. Obviously yeah, we talk about you keeping up with Case I'm sure you still follow fortunes of your high school team as well right yeah yeah absolutely and the, you know they're having a good season they're hanging in they've beaten some some solid opponents they're right now they're fifth in computer points in, in region one which is one of the toughest regions uh, in in the state because you got Menor and Ignatius and St. Ed's all in that region and right now we are hanging tough here's a little shovel pass to Chris Austin straight ahead gets to the 30 maybe cut down a little short of the 30 out at the 29 it's going to be short of the first down for the Terriers third down and two with 12.25 to play here in the fourth quarter. Case with this one well in hand, 34 to seven. Yeah, high school football is terrific in this area. It just seems like it's getting better. A lot of teams uh, just continue to improve their programs. Great teams and, and great players. You have Menor's quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, who from what I hear, I haven't seen him in person yet, but from what I hear is, is one of the best prospects to come out of out of Ohio in a long time. I'm sure that's that's a guy that the Buckeyes will be taking a hard look at. Um, he's lighting up the scoreboard and, and he's he's not turning it over. He's 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 a very good player from what I understand. So I'm, I'm looking to get looking forward to get out and seeing him in the next few weeks here as, as the season progresses. And you never know, Willoughby South may end up playing Menor depending on where they end up in the uh, playoff picture. Brandon Hanna runs for a first down for Hiram, picks up the two that he needed. He got out to the 31, pardon me, to the 32. First and 10, 11.30 to play here in the fourth quarter. Spartans come on a blitz. Wade Self got in there, got a hit on Hannah and rushed the throw, and he overshoots his intended target downfield. David Klimazuski was the intended receiver, but Hannah knew Self was coming. Dan, that has got to be one of the worst feelings for a quarterback to hear those footsteps. Yeah, you see a guy coming at you full speed, and, and you know you got to make a decent pass. It's it's tough. It is tough. Um, and like I said, you know, before, it's tough when people are rolling around your feet. It's tough when when guys are coming up, and, and you know you're going to have to take a shot. But uh, at that point, you you got to you got to realize that the, the throw is the most important thing, and, and let it go. Of course, you know I was like I was the type of guy that liked to move around a little bit, so. <laughs> I, uh, I can't say I sat in the pocket as much as some of these guys do, but, uh, yeah, it is a tough thing when, when you got guys bearing down on you like that. Austin on second down is caught in the backfield by Dan Calabrese. Another nice defensive play by the junior. It will be a third down coming up for Hiram, and they lost yardage on that play, loss of one. And it is third down and 11. Case continues to rack up the tackles for loss. 10.55 to play here in the fourth quarter. Third down and 11 for Hiram. 34 to seven case. Here is the snap back to Brandon Hanna. Looking downfield, makes the connection and then the ball knocked away. The intended target was Brandon James and he was hit and knocked down as that ball arrived. It was a good throw, good throw. He was, he was open. I just think there was a lot of blue jerseys around and he couldn't couldn't snag it cleanly and that, that led to the incomplete pass on the hit. Boy, Dan, I, I remember last year, I think you joined us when we were in Chicago. Yep. And uh, here's the snap back to Curley. Drops it, picks it up, and gets a nice punt away and it's caught there by Calabrese and he dives ahead for a couple before he is tackled. 
<clears throat> out at the 36-yard line. That's where the Spartans will take over. Nice recovery by Curley there. But yeah. I know you made the point then that it is such a different perspective watching from up here as you have to contend with at field level as a player. I think your remark was, if I could have seen the field the way <laughs> I do from up here, I could have had 60 touchdown passes a year. Yeah. Uh, it's just a totally different perspective from what we see on television compared to what the players have to deal with. Absolutely. you got so much going on around you. There's chaos on the field. And I think another thing that adds is, is it's tough. It's a different perspective now watching Coach Deblack's offense operate from this point of view as opposed to being in it because – you know, by watching it from afar here, I can tell, you know, I'm in Coach Debs' head because I played for him for four years, and I know what he's trying to do. I know the things that he's looking at and the things he's seeing. And I think uh, it, it's just it's just strange sometimes, you know, taking a step back and, and saying, okay, well, I know what they're going to run here because I've been in that situation, you know, 100 times before. Seven-yard run for Ricky Hanslick on the first play of the drive, second down and three. Football resting on the Case 43-yard line. Bohan straight ahead as they hand the football. I believe that was, well, we'll see who, who carried that one. That was Steve Magister who got the carry, the fullback. He has the first down, first and 10 Case from the 49-yard line. It's nice to see Max Bohan get some reps here late in the game. Max is a, is a good player. I've known him for, for four or five years now. And uh, he actually, I don't know if you guys talked about this earlier today, but he was... He was on the Hiram roster last season, was he not? Last year he played for Hiram, transferred back to Case. So started with Case, played a year at Hiram, and sure. then uh, transferred back. They really like uh, Max Bohan, the way he handles himself on the field, the way he runs the offense. Yeah, he, he's a great player. He's he's a short guy. He's probably only about five foot seven, five foot eight maybe, but uh, he does know what's going on. He throws he throws a very good ball for for you know competing against his size. 9.05 to play here in the fourth quarter. 34-7 case. Second down play. They will give it to Hanslick again. Hard runner. And he gets out close to the 50-yard line. They'll get the uh, lost yardage back. And it will be third down. And about nine coming up for case with 8.45 to play. Here in the uh, fourth quarter. Wind has died down a little bit now. And as... Uh, come and gone this afternoon repeatedly. He'll die down for a while and then come back. Here is Bohan sprinting out. Now he'll try and cut it back. Buys himself some time. He'll tuck it under and run it to the 45, to the 40, and out of bounds and should have enough for the first down. There is a flag thrown there at the 45. Looks like it might be coming back in a hold. Well, you're under pressure, Dan. Ed always has these calls <laughs> right away. Let's see. Chop block, you got an illegal chop block there. It's gonna go against the Spartans. And so that one will come back. Nice run by Bohan, but might have been helped by the, the illegal block. That will come back to the 35 yard line, 15 yard penalty. Typically you see a quarterback run out one way and come back. That that could be a, the situation where a chop block happens just because you've got linemen trying to, <laughs> trying to improvise on the run there because they don't know what the quarterback's gonna do. And a lot of times two, two guys will end up hitting the same, same person on the defense and uh, occasionally happens illegally. Uh, third down and uh, about a mile for Case as Bohan fires it upfield. That's intended for Tony Leibarger incomplete. And it's fourth down and 25 for Case from the 35-yard line of the Spartans. And the Spartans will punt this one away. Looks like we'll have a new punter as Fabrice Henry comes out. Henry, the junior, out of Mantaway, Crestwood High School product. 8.09 to play, and just as the Spartans punt, the wind does kick up again, <laughs> blowing right into the face of the punter, and that one might have been partially blocked. But it takes a nice case bounce, so no harm done as it gets all the way back to the 34-yard line. And that's where Hiram will come out. Well, Case has dealt with a lot of problems on the offensive line this year, Dan, with a lot of injuries and guys having to play out of position and play very short on some Saturdays and uh, that is uh, that's tough to deal with as a quarterback isn't it it is and, and you got your arguably your best offensive uh, lineman and Tony Opperman out for the season I believe with uh, the shoulder injury a knee injury yeah. knee, like knee injury yeah but um, it, it's always tough and we had guys banged up all the time and that's just something that happens that uh, 
you know, you get those big guys banging around all the time at practice and, and down on game days. And, they, you know, they, they play very physical brand of, of football, and, and it's unfortunate to see that happen. And as a quarterback, you know, you, you like to see your best five on the field at all times, but uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way, and, and you've got to get the guys that, that, that come in, and you've got to roll with it. Caleb Jones on the screen pass, picks up two on the first play. Second down, Hannah over the middle. That's caught by Josh Corkill of the Terriers. Gets across the 40, out near the 44-yard line. That will be very close to a first down, and uh, they are already saying it's good enough for the first down. First and 10 from the 44-yard line. 7.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Hannah will keep it on the ground, go to Jones. Jones ran into his own man, now tries to turn the other way, and he is caught behind the line of scrimmage. This will go for a loss. It was interesting. It looked like he got lost yeah. right there for a second, kind of just stood still. It was up against the back of one of his offensive linemen. Hit big Matt Russell, the left guard. And got turned around there, ends up losing two on the play. Second down and 12 from the 42-yard line. 6.41 to go here in the fourth quarter. Hannah back to throw, middle of the field, gets the ball to James at the 45. He picks up three, third down and nine coming up for Hiram College. There's a flag on this play as well. Looks like it's going to be offsides on the defense. Ed Doherty would be proud of you, Dan. <laughs> Offside against the Spartans. And that will make it, uh, well, they'll mark off five yards here. And that will put the football at the 47. So you're looking at a second down now. And about seven for Hiram. 34 to seven, the outcome of the game not in doubt at this point. Case and Hiram playing out the string here at Case Field. 34-7 Case, couple of touchdowns today by Manny Secre as Jones runs straight ahead. It's about two, maybe three on the play and a third and five coming up for Hiram College. Well, a big game against Worcester next week. They're a little bit down, yeah, but uh, you guys had some Good games against the Fighting Scots. We did. And they, you know, going to Worcester is always a tough place to play. Um, they, they bring a lot of fans. They have a great atmosphere down there, and they love their football. So I don't anticipate that game being easy by any stretch of the imagination. This one might have been picked off off the hands of the tight end, Tom Moran, and it's picked off by the Spartans. Fatty Haddad with the pick. Haddad, the sophomore out of Mayfield, comes up to make the pick on the Deflected pass, and the Spartans will get it back on a turnover, and they will take over in their own territory at the 43-yard line. That was a great play on the tip ball there. Corner was playing off and just overshot his receiver just a tad, and it was just enough for that corner to come in and, and scoop it up. First career interception for Fadi Haddad out of Mayfield. Now they will put it in the hands of Magister, I believe, was the ball carrier again there, and he high steps his way out to the 50-yard line. We'll check that. It's Billy Beecher on the carry. Great football name there. Billy Beecher. Out of Palmyra, PA. Into Hiram territory by about a half yard. Seven-yard pickup. And this time Magister will carry it, spins away from an arm tackle and gets out close to the 42-yard line. Pickup of eight and a first down for the Spartans with five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. So you're doing a radio show on Monday nights. And I where, am. Where can we find that? Um, it's a website. It's an online radio show called Cleveland Sports Forums. That's the, that's the site name. And... Uh, we just started it two weeks ago. We've had some really good guests already. We've had Coach Sam Ritigliano on the air. Uh, this coming Monday, we'll have former NFL quarterback Tony Banks, and we'll be talking to MLB.com writer 
um, Anthony Castrovince about the World Series this coming week. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's slowly growing. We had a, about 400 listeners the first week, which is pretty good because we, we didn't really advertise for it. it. It was on short notice, and uh, we're just cr- trying to keep building, and, and hopefully uh, things, things keep happening with that. We can turn it into uh, more than once a week. Dan, that is Cleveland Sports Forums. Yes, dot com. Right. Yep. And right now the website is a little bit hard to navigate, but we're working on getting that uh, situated. And uh, there should be a new website up in the, within the, the next two weeks. It's a lot more user friendly. Billy Beecher in at quarterback fires the pass up and out of the reach of the intended target over on the far sideline. Case looking now at a third and twelve. Second unit in for Case. Beecher, the freshman quarterback. He has Hanslick in the backfield. Whole new set of wide receivers for the Spartans. 34-7 with 4.08 to go here in the fourth quarter. Low snap. Flag comes out. Beecher will run for it and steps out of bounds over near the Case sideline. And they will sort this one out. I don't know. I don't know what the call is going to be here because yeah, I, I have didn't no idea. quite see it. The flag came out very early. It is against uh, Hiram, and they will mark it ahead to the 40-yard line. And I'm not sure if they've got this spotted right. They will mark it at the 45-yard line. And I never saw a signal as to the. Uh, I think they're still discussing what the actual call is going to be. I don't think they know. Yeah, they have not walked off the penalty yardage yet. Now they are ready to put it down at the 40. And it's an offside call against Hiram with 4.03 to play. We had some great experience while you were here, Dan, off the field. Sure. Working for Sports Illustrated for a while. Had a chance to write for uh, their website as Mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Trying to stay involved in the sports media. I think that's what I want to be doing here. Uh, for the future you know just when you spend so much time around football for your whole entire life and and you play it for for four years in college you you want to be involved and you want to stay with it and it's obviously something that I know and love so little crossing route over on the far sideline is caught for first down yardage that pass goes to Cameron Kleitz the freshman out of Adrian Michigan We're being introduced to a lot of new Spartans here in the uh, waning minutes of this football game. uh, 3.35 to go and counting. That's a first down all the way down to the 18-yard line. It picks up 22. That was a great throw up the scene there, especially for a freshman to make. I don't care who you're playing or what point in the game it is. uh, that That was a heck of a throw. Billy Beecher at quarterback. Magister is in the backfield. Kleit stays in at a slot receiver position on the left side. Beecher will try and keep it, picks his way forward down to the 15 to the 11-yard line and is forced out of bounds. Josh Corkill runs him out of bounds for Hiram. Looks like we've got a little mobile guy here coming off the bench uh, late in the game. And, uh, you know, I I don't know too much about about Billy Beecher, but uh, he does look like he's running the ball fairly well well 6-2 195 Palmyra area high school is where he played his high school ball in Pennsylvania Dan did you play in that Ohio Pennsylvania all-star game I didn't I was actually chosen um, as one of the alternates and uh, Rudy Kerbis from St. Ignatius actually ended up playing who was uh, he ended up at John Carroll playing basketball for four years but um, no I never got a chance to play in that game I'm sure it would have been a great time Beecher runs this one, gets inside the five before he is cut down, and this ball will be marked at the three-yard line. It's a first down, and it's first and goal case. Beecher came up just a little shy of his first career touchdown. 2.28 to play. First and goal from the three. 34-7 case, trying to add on a touchdown here late. Magister is in the backfield. Four receivers set for Billy Beecher. He will take the snap, hand it to Stephen Magister. He gets close to the goal line, but he's not in. Well, I know what play they would call here yeah, for so you. you. Go do. right over the top. That's uh, you know, that's exactly something that uh, you don't want a ball to switch too many hands. I mean, it, it just takes a little, little bit of the 
of the responsibility way. You just take the snap and jump over the pile. I think it avoid avoiding a handoff in this situation is, is just the smartest play. And if you're inside the one yard line, it's not going to take a whole lot as long as those offensive linemen can, can take out the legs of the, the guys across from them. Spartans let the uh, play clock roll down here to eight right now as they break the huddle. Beecher approaches center. Now four on the play clock. And he gets the snap and takes a knee. And the Spartans, I think, will try and run out the clock here and not necessarily try to punch it in. He loses a yard there, and the Spartans are going to call off the dogs here. One minute to play here in the fourth quarter. Well, I want to tell you, it's great to see you here. Great to have you on the uh, broadcast. We've got an open mic for you anytime. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, having me. You know, I'm sure uh, I'd like to talk a little more with you guys coming up here in the, in, the, in the games, especially as we approach UAA play, and there's some, some tough teams coming here. I don't know. We should be home against Chicago this year, no? Home against Chicago on the road for Wash U mm -hmm. and also against uh, Carnegie Mellon. And those will be three tough games for the Spartans as Beecher takes a knee, and that will run out uh, this one. And it will go in the books as a 34-7 Spartans win against Hiram College, their fourth consecutive win in the last four years against the Terriers. And the Spartans improved to 5-1 and one on the season. And really, any way you slice it, Dan, a win on homecoming is great. And uh, to win five out of your first six is a great confidence boost heading into four tough games to finish out the year. No doubt about that. I'm sure if you told Coach Debelak at week six or week seven that he would be 5-1, and one, he would take it any day of the week. I, I know coming into the season he was he was not quite sure what he was going to have, especially with the new quarterback and, and uh, changing up the system a little bit to uh, – to suit his player, but uh, yeah, I, I think five and one is a, is a great record, no matter which way you look.